this is Deboki and today for Not My Thesis I want to talk about postdocs. So I will give like kind of a quick overview about what postdocs are I guess um, for people who aren't familiar with the academic career path and then I'm just going to kind of talk at length about what my considerations are when I'm thinking about whether or not I want to do a postdoc. This video was inspired by a few things. So first there is a nature biotechnology paper published about the economic pro uh, cost of doing a postdoc. Second, Amanda from A Scientist Reads has this really great thread on her Twitter. Um, her Twitter account is Tangible Ansible and I will link to it below. Um, uh, basically about her experiences as an industry scientist compared to her husband's experience as a postdoc. So to talk about what a postdoc is, I'm just going to go st take a step back and talk about how you get a job as a professor at a university. So first off, you gotta do your PhD. The goal of the PhD is just to show that A, you can do science, you can set up experiments, and you can run them, you can get, collect data, and B, to show that you can get some expertise in a field. Hopefully after five to six years, you will know more about your field than most people will ever want to. Afterwards, if say you wanna become a professor at a university, the next step, depending on what field you're in, is usually to do a postdoc. Now. My caveat of different fields do different things differently in academia still holds. My husband is in economics. It's very common for people in economics to go from a PhD straight into a faculty position, and that's what he did. There are postdocs in economics, but they're not as prevalent um, or is not as part of the culture, I think, as they are for, say, the life sciences. So a postdoc is similar to your PhD, except you're not a student anymore, and you're usually working more independently. So you are still working in a lab, you're working for a PI, a professor, but you're not a student. You don't have to do a dissertation. You don't have to do all of that bullshit. So you get paid for your work. You're not getting paid that much, and we'll get into that a little bit later, um, but you are getting paid and you're doing research and your main goal is to publish. And you want to publish your research in, you know, really well received journals. You want to be able to publish frequently enough to show that you are putting out really great ideas that are validated by people who are high up in your field. Yeah. The whole goal of your postdoc is basically validation. And the, the reason for this is because when you're applying for jobs as a faculty member, you want to be able to come to these universities and basically show them this whole resume full of beautiful papers that are, I don't know, proof that you're a good scientist, that you're going to come up with great ideas, that you're going to pursue them and be able to prove that they work so that when you go to this university as a professor there, you're going to be able to bring them all this acclaim, all this money from grants and all this stuff that will just basically enhance their department. The other potential use of a postdoc is to be able to divert your research interests. So you might get through your PhD and you say, this is great. I want to know more about a different field. Maybe I want to completely change fields from what I've been doing the past five years. So there are people who might just kind of make small shifts and they'll go from maybe one organ to another or one gene to another. But there are people who also make much larger shifts. They'll completely change their field. There might be people who start off in electrical engineering and end up in bioengineering. And the postdoc is a way that they can basically take their experience as a PhD student, knowing how to set up experiments and all of this basic science things that they know how to do and gain new skills to add to their toolbox so that they can say like I have all of this experience in all of these different areas and I can maybe even bring them together in some way or just completely divert interest completely. So usually postdocs will run for three to five years. You might potentially have to do one or two if you come out of one of your postdocs and you don't think you have as competitive of an application as you would like. So yeah. Your postdoc is a way to get um, get publications and get new skills. So I'm, I'm focusing kind of on postdocs in academia. There are postdocs that you can do in industry. So when I say industry, what I'm talking about are things like the pharmaceutical industry or um, biotech. And there are ways to do postdocs there. I think that kind of experience is a little bit fuzzier to me. and the reasons for or against doing them are a little bit fuzzier to me, so I'm just going to kind of focus on the academic postdoc life. You usually do a postdoc if you're interested in academic life, if you think you might pursue it, or if you kind of want to build up your resume a little bit more or get more skills. But there are a lot of considerations that go into whether or not you should do one. And one of the the, the issues is 
academic jobs are just not that plentiful anymore. And there's a lot of reasons why. We can talk about tenure, we can just talk about funding, but there's so many, there's just not that many jobs. And so it's a huge gamble sometimes it feels like to commit yourself for three to five years to a postdoc where you're not getting paid very well and then come out of it saying, well, I'm not gonna be able to get a job. Like I'm not gonna be able to get an academic job because it's so competitive. And so what that does at the postdoc level is it creates a really competitive environment where everyone is just really focused and really pressured to publish as well as they can. I think the Twitter thread from Amanda that I mentioned earlier from Tangible Ansible was re a really great discussion on kind of the pressures that are put on postdocs to get as much of their research done to get all of these publications out so that they can do well at their next step. And the expectations can become incredibly high because science is hard. It's not like, it's not easy to publish well and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. In academia in general, because everyone's sort of in the same boat of trying to publish well, like it can create really kind of weird mentalities towards work and work-life balance. So one of the things that I really appreciated about Amanda's thread was she talked about her shift from being a PhD student to working in industry. She was talking a lot about how her experience as an industry science, she feels like it's so much healthier for her mentally because that pressure for publication is just not there. Like there's may maybe different kinds of pressures, but it's a very different attitude towards science compared to what we probably experience when we're in academia full time. And one of the big shifts was for her was just like, I don't need to work all the time. Like this is not necessary. And she actually talks about how, um, how, people at her workplace were like, if you keep on working the way that you did in your PhD, you're going to burn out. And that's how I kind of feel sometimes watching people in postdocs trying to work towards that next step. This is not universal. Not all labs are gonna treat postdocs this way. There are probably, there are a ton of great labs that you can do your postdoc in and you're gonna do well in. I think what's hard from someone in my position is to figure out, well, what lab could I go to that will give me the best combination of being able to pursue my interests, work in a healthy environment, and also publish well. And I think that's a really delicate balance to strike that's become increasingly difficult given just how competitive the job market is. This isn't to say that all postdocs are like suffering under immense amounts of stress or that they're all like super competitive with each other, but that's just what it looks like from my side of the graduation wall, I guess. And kind of coupled to that is that you're working like you're you're in this really high pressure environment but you're you're really under a lot of stress but you're also not getting paid very well especially compared to jobs say in industry where you have a phd and you can usually make an okay amount of money and this is like such an infuriating kind of conversation to get into because nobody wants to say that they're doing science for the money but money is always going to be a big part of this equation especially when you can do science that you're interested in and maybe potentially get paid for it better in other places. And I have friends who are, for whom like, money is a huge consideration for their next step because they have student loans. Like, I don't know if people realize, but the economy wasn't great for a while. So like, it's probably not gonna be great for a while again. So money is not an insignificant factor. Like, it's real. For me, it's really interesting to kind of compare what I, what my friends and I kind of think of postdocs now compared to like what people say in previous generations might have thought. So my parents had always told me like postdocs there was like their favorite time of their lives. And when they tell me it makes sense, um, like, so what my mom says in particular is like, when you're a PhD student, like, yeah, you're doing research, but like, you also have to do a dissertation. You have all of this other work that goes with being a student and it's stressful and frustrating. So that's what kind of sucks about being a PhD student. When you're a professor, like you've got all of the flexibility and like independence associated with academia, but you also have to apply for grants. You gotta make sure that there's enough money coming into the lab. You don't actually get to spend that much time doing research on your own. Like postdoc is kind of that sweet spot of being able to do the research that you're interested in without having to be too distracted. But I think the hardest part about this conversation or really just this debate and as a 
grad student is that when you are in grad school, when you are in academia, you are surrounded by academics and there's nothing academics I think love more than academia. Like for all of its bullshit, like academics love academia and I don't blame them. You have so much freedom to pursue what the questions that you find interesting and there's something almost romantic about that to say like here is this great big world out there and I am gonna do the research to find out what I think is cool about it. Like that's lovely. You also have like practical things where you get to kind of decide your schedule and you don't gotta clock in and out every day. So there's something really lovely about that. The problem is that when you're a PhD student, you are surrounded by people who are successful at getting at these jobs and that can skew their perspective. I'm really fortunate to have an advisor who's really open to people pursuing other paths, but I've talked to professors who have openly admitted that they want all of their students to go into academia and that they actively discourage them for, from pursuing other paths. And it's just mind boggling to me because I I can't imagine that you can look at the job market the way that it is, look at the academic job market the way that it is, and say like everyone should be pursuing this path. Like it's not going to work. Most of us are not going to be able to get jobs as academics no matter how hard we try, nor are we all meant to. Like getting a PhD does not mean that you're necessarily going to be a good academic. You can be a great researcher and not pursue academia and still have a really fulfilling scientific life. And it's hard because the way that we talk about science and academia does not always make that clear. Especially as a PhD student, there is kind of a binary of like, either you're in academia or you're in industry. But you know, there's a lot more options out there. And like policy, education, communication, there's so many other paths. And even if you have an advisor who is open to other jobs, it can become really difficult to find how to get them. I'm not decided on what my next path will be. I'm looking for internships for the summer in the areas that I'm interested in with science writing and science media um, because that's kind of a path that I've always had in the back of my head and I am now trying to figure out what the balance I want in my life between writing and research is. But that's something that's been hard to figure out on my own and I still don't think I have it figured out. I've been lucky to be around people who have access to experience and resources that's really helpful. Um, one of the things that I think that's becoming really beneficial for grad students everywhere is that funding agencies like the National Institute of Health, National Science Foundation, they're all kind of like opening up to the fact that they're fun that there's all of these PhD students who just like don't have a path. So there are they're funding these different organizations and groups to help students kind of pursue what are considered alternative paths. Um, so at BU, we have the BU Best program. I think at UPenn, there's something like the Pathfinders program, which are geared towards helping students in the biomedical sciences find other careers. This isn't great just for us as individuals. I like I think it's great because people with PhD student training have a lot of ex I have a lot of meaningful experience outside of just being able to do research. Being able to place people who have this experience in other fields is good. I mean, I was at a talk from uh, by Nina Dudnik, who is the founder of Seeding Labs, which is a nonprofit that donates old lab equipment um, to other laboratories, and she talked about how she 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 had to have like kind of this mental shift on her own to realize that she's still doing science. Like she may not be doing research, but as part of her job, she still acts like a scientist. That idea has been really influential for me in the past few months as I consider what my next step is going to be. This idea that I, I might not need to do what I'm doing every day now to actually be a scientist. There are other ways for me to be a scientist. And I think that's always meaningful to kind of take into account. Um, when you're set, stepping back and kind of assessing like what did I go to grad school for so yeah I don't actually have an answer to the postdoc question I just have a lot of considerations but I think it'll be interesting to see how this shapes out so if you have like thoughts about postdocs if you've kind of faced this question um, or are facing it in the future definitely like feel free to talk to me about it below on Twitter I think the more we talk about this, the better it's been for everyone, and yeah. So yeah, bye.